Hello everyone and welcome to another Naraka Blade Point video. This is OSK and today we have another VOD review, this time on Yorohime. We drop a clean 7 kills in Empyrean 5 on Steam PC. Pretty nice little stacked lobby that we have going on here and I think you'll enjoy the gameplay. For this particular game, again I pick Yorohime, not a character that I pick a whole lot of now that Zipping is out, but I just wanted uh, to pick Yoto for some good old time's sake. Pick the F3, and we're going with the V3 as well, the the meta on Yodo, I would say. And we're also going full stamina glyphs with full grapple distance, which will allow us to dodge more and also get a little bit extra distance on those grapples. So, guys, hopefully you guys enjoy the gameplay. We're going to have plenty of action here in this one. We're going to drop Matab, and we actually get lucky off the drop with a nice little golden spear, so that's going to allow us to ride that momentum throughout the whole rest of the game. So... Guys, thank you once again for watching, and if you enjoy the content today, please be sure to like and subscribe. Make sure to comment and share, do all that fun stuff, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. Devoid of curses or demons, a pleasant fluke. You will attack our enemies. Anyway, getting into this first fight, we're going to go up against a Yodo. It's important to know what Yodo can throw out. She either has F1, F2, F3. Uh, F1 and F3 are the most common. Um, F3 being the purveyor out of that, which means basically a free reset for the Yodo. So you want to make sure that you have the bow at the ready in case she puts it a little bit low. Or if she throws her spinning blade in a way that doesn't cover her entire body like you should always be doing, then you can probably get a few cheeky little arrow shots to interrupt some healing, especially with the new nerf. Um... And yeah, other than that, it's basically just watching out for the ult if she happens to have one. I know that from my own ult, if they haven't been fighting, I'm at about a quarter charge. So there's probably no way that they're going to be at any relative charge for their ultimate. So you probably don't have to worry about that that early in the fight. But getting into it, let's go ahead and see the way that I move. A pleasant fluke. You always want to go ahead and get the bell. Make sure that you can always see your opponent. Really helpful. Starting out with the new horizontal attacks, the hit stun is really helping off of that. And from here, we're just fishing for basic attacks. You want to bait with the focus attack there to to uh, bait out the parry and then get some combos going. That's kind of my approach to this whole thing. Now she's, she's really behind at this point, which means I can kind of abuse just trying to get some free hits. I have a little bit of leeway now. She's trying to flee away. We're going to get some free hits. And right here, you're going to see me go for the vertical hit of the spear. Keep in mind uh, that this works for a lot of different weapons if you use the vertical attack. But look at how high it reaches. That is about two character models up. So if you're using the spear, make sure you're using vertical to cover those higher places. And you'll really love the result. Great. And that's the end of the first fight. So let's go over uh, things I should be looking for, things I can do differently. Uh, starting off with this first engagement, kind of had to drop there to keep the combo going. So you can see that I'm charging focus and letting it go. Uh, one thing that I want to be cognizant of here is just playing it a little, a little bit slowly, a little bit more slowly rather. So if we get to a good point, so that first clang is fine. Um, just trying to get any kind of damage we can get. This next little reset point, I need to be more patient and wait just a little bit. You can see right here, I'm charging the blue. I want her to hit me with the with the um, normal basic attack, but what ends up happening is I let go of the blue a little bit early. She gets the normal damage in, and the attack from my basic attack actually runs into the ending animation of the nunchuck uh, animation. So she actually ends up winning out of damage. So whenever you're doing your focus 
your uh, focus holds or your focus cancels. Just make sure you're holding it for long enough so that the animation actually clears on your end so that you can start a combo string. That's the biggest thing out of this whole fight. As you can see, I let go of the focus attack there because what I really want her to do is I want her to throw out a parry so I can get a free combo off. Still get the combo here. What I was trying to go for is a drop down um, landing animation cancel vertical uh, combo, which actually works pretty well. What you do is you do an uppercut, hold left or right, and then you do vertical, vertical, and then a jump horizontal. That's usually pretty good damage. You can also um, follow that up with a crouch left horizontal or you know crouch horizontal to cover the ground there, but it's not as reliable. So anyway, a little food for thought, uh, easy little win uh, starting the match off. My blade is ready to unsheath. My old masters would be proud. Getting into this next fight, there's not really anything fancy, it's just me being heads up and thinking, oh, maybe they're going to go insta res. This is why you always want to go for a, unless, unless the health is relatively low on the other player, you want to go further away than what the game recommends you. Because look at this, they have less resources, not as great of weapon quality as they did before. And this is, again, just bullying. If you're on the receiving end, it's very unfun, but if you're on the delivering end, then it's as easy as that. For this fight, I probably don't need to go too in-depth, but there are two things I wanted to point out. Um, this isn't one of them, but always get the bell whenever you can so you know what enemies are around you and get it to play automatically. There we go. So you can see, I see them there. They're obviously third-person peeking around the pillar here. So right here, I just got attacked by a katana focus attack, which puts me behind, but you have to be aware that the katana focus attack has a follow-up focus attack that some players will go for. Um, I am one of the players normally who will go for the follow-up blue just because no one does it. Um, so I'm a little bit more aware of this or expecting it more than a lot of other players, I would say. Um, so I just throw out a parry and that's pretty much the whole fight, honestly. So that's the first thing. Blah, 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 blue focus things. And I'm wanting to go for as many follow-ups as possible because look at the health advantage here. I'm, I can afford one mistake or two. Um, but really, what I'm looking for right there. So this is the point that I was talking about earlier as far as the focus attack cancel goes. It's a little bit easier to do on the long sword because the animation or the hitbox for the animation doesn't really last uh, quite as long. All right, so we clink there on basic attacks. That's all fine and dandy. On this next attack, watch what happens. I'm focusing a blue. Not only if if the player is a little bit newer, they might bait out a parry as well, which lets you get uh, some extra hits on. But look, you tank the hit with the blue, and then immediately after you tank the blue, after you tank it with the blue, you can throw out your own focus attack, or I mean uh, your own basic attack, and then just start your own combo string. And that's risk-free, by the way. You eat a little bit of damage to be able to do a combo. And that's the fight. So that's the importance of focus canceling, and that's also the importance of knowing what weapon you're facing. So there you go, guys. Let them know fear. Look, as 
as if freshly hammered and locked. Why do they challenge me? It never ends well for them. Starting off fight number four, similar mindset to what we had um, in the previous engagement where the opponent just insta-rezzed and then went for all their old loot. Um, this is a pretty good trick to catch anyone unawares for this. I kind of baited them to go back in. I'm not going to let them get to their old loot. Just kind of bait it out. I know that they're going to be right behind this pillar whenever they're peeking. I was actually expecting this, but my counter just wasn't fast enough. So there you go. Very important counter strategy whenever you're going up against a great sword. If you see stone form like that, typically um, players don't go for the full on focus attack there. Um, but basically the way you want to play it is every time you hit a stone form, if you hit it uh, twice, you want to immediately tap dodge back. If you hit it once, usually there's a delay in between um, in between the stone form and the release focus attack. But either way, you always want to tap dodge back whenever you can. Because if they go for the over-the-top move like this player did, then you're going to have an easy time parrying it. So again, there's my mistake there. Poke, poke, dodge, counter. And by the way, if you're playing Yodo, a lot of players um, use F3 defensively only, and that's not the only use for it. If this player didn't have their ultimate up, then this F3 actually would have sealed out the entire rest of the fight because there's a little bit of hit stun, it's uh, gold focus, and it's really just a great move, just both offensive and, decent, and defensive. So don't be afraid to use it offensively. From here, I'm just playing peekaboo. Do not ask me what the heck happened here uh, whenever she actually misses me and I run back into it. <laughs> Giant hitbox, I suppose. And from there, it's just fishing for hits. And that's about it, guys. Aiming for your brain was my worthiest challenge yet. Attack our enemies, or I shall make you regret it. What a hungry thing the grave is. Starting off this fight, this is just a heads up play to use your range attacks. If you have a, even just a little bit of space, especially if you have a bow, uh, you can get some quick stuns like I did in this engagement. So we're going to start off with a quick little bow shot. Now we're going to be following up. Now I didn't realize I was dodge banned there, so that's kind of why I threw out the one, two, three. And again, we're not really in danger of dying here, right there. I wanted to throw out the F3 uh, just to break up the little uh, combo he was going for. He actually did a decent amount of damage, but this is why playing Yodo is so strong. Because this sword, if you can hit it, is just, just massive damage. I mean, look at this. He's got half his entire health bar. And because of the grade of weapon that I have, it just does that entire half health bar. And you can vary up the timing with this as well. Um, I'm not the in this clip. I'm not the best at using her ultimate like as far as the timings go I'm still like Muscle memorying I guess my muscles are still like getting used to using a Yoda ult here So forgive me if my mechanics aren't the best, but yeah, that's pretty much the gist of this fight I would say uh, make sure you use your ranged weapons when you ever whenever you can if you have a little bit of space and uh, just don't be afraid to throw out your F3 if you're playing ultimate or if you're playing um, Yodo because that stuff is strong. Attack our enemies, or I shall make you regret it. My blade is 
ready to achieve. The power of Our armor is whole again. So starting off this clip, I'm just using my deduction skills to determine that this player is the one that has the, the bounty on me, as you can see by the bodyguard. It is, it's not exactly top five yet, so maybe I could have held off on this fight for right now, but I was kind of feeling, I was feeling pretty confident. I noticed that he threw out his focus attack earlier, so I'm looking for the parry. It might be conditioning on his part, but if I can hit a parry, then that would be really cool. Sometimes the hitbox on the focus attack there, um, actually is a lot wider than the animation so i was just fishing for it get punished there from the focus attack and that's the reset of the fight so one thing i could have gone for the counter here um but in this particular scenario i already had a health advantage here so i'm just looking to poke down as much as possible um i realize that since it's a wu chin um he can just get a free reset off if i can bait out the reset that's another ult i don't have to worry about especially if i don't use my own uh so that is a very important point to take home here from here it's just using f3 to break up any combos and if he didn't heal right when he did or if i hit a headshot there then that's a free win for me so unfortunately that didn't happen, but there are a few tips to be gleaned from this fight. The only thing I would say about this fight is whenever I activate my ultimate and I see that he's getting away, I need to cancel it a little bit earlier so I can save that last little bit of charge. Our armor is whole again. Yodo is one of the characters' advantage with having a partial ultimate sometimes, so definitely need to make better use of that. But other than that, it's the gameplay itself is nothing new that I haven't already mentioned. The shadow spreads. Hmm. If I threw this, it might do some minor damage. The moment for my vengeance is not yet nigh. Our armor is whole again. Two things to say about this fight is that I did do a good job of getting some pressure down with um, the bow here. Definitely want to make use of that dodge band status. It's huge in Naraka. So it's good going for that, but kind of out of arrows there. Quick little combo out of the F3 is pretty nice. The parry here, I'm not really sure what canceled my, uh, my uh, counter attack there. I think I was just inputting stuff a little bit too fast and it caused me to flub but uh i'll just go ahead and spoil this that the Wu Chen does end up getting away it's not me that kills him uh in the end but definitely could have done a better job uh following up off of this uh went for a vertical even um i could have uh just stayed a little bit more calm with the way that i treated that parry um and i really dropped a kill whenever i didn't really need to uh so and in this particular scenario, if you're going for LP, um, you can see that there's actually um, six alive. So if I would have gotten the kill on here, that's a guaranteed uh, top five situation and uh, really just need to not drop opportunities like this. So uh, you always want to be patient. You always want to make sure that your inputs are clean and it was not in this scenario. Other than that, a uh, little iframe is what caused the dodge there. He's just throwing out focus attacks. I should be looking for the parry, uh, but I am not. I'm looking for that last little bit of damage, and that almost gets me killed. So 
Please. Whenever I smell blood, I have the I have the potential to just go blindly in looking for pokes, and um, I need to play it a little bit more methodically a lot of the time. This is something that I struggle with quite a lot. Um, so it's nothing new as far as that goes, but that ultimate causes a reset, and we also have a third party coming in I can hear from the right. Uh, so I go ahead and back out of here. But thankfully, he did drop his golden nunchuck, and we'll be using that later. Hmm. If I threw this, it might do some minor damage. My blade is ready to unsheath. So a quick little note here before we get into this fight. If you notice that two people are fighting, take the opportunity to go ahead and do something good for yourself. Like in my scenario, my uh, bow was completely broken. So if you see peop two people focused on trying to kill each other, then you can just take a second, make sure that your resources are all good to go, and then engage as a third party if you need to. And you can see that here. If I threw this, it might do some minor damage. Other than that, I know that the Wu Chen doesn't have any ultimate, so I'm going to go after him. Also, he's predictable, which makes that parry a lot easier. I still don't end up getting him in the end, but it is what it is. The Bane Breath kind of breaks us up, and in this particular scenario, it's a top five scenario. I'm, I want to go for the win, so... I don't want to be recklessly chasing after somebody if a third party is just going to come behind me, which happens a lot in higher elo, so definitely want to not do that. Third party situation as well. We're just going to get out of there. Cut our losses. Now, in this particular scenario, I do notice that there is a Morris Blessing, so I am going to go ahead and get some legendary armor here, and that's going to help us out here later on. The shadow will shortly begin to spread. Time to bundle up. Oh. For this particular engagement, I was very aware that the Morse Blessing was still open, so. Uh, in that case, you can always look towards it to see if there are any players fighting over it. Uh, in this case, there were. Whenever you're picking out which player to go ahead and third party, personally, I like to use my ranged weapon to get damage on both of them to see where their health bars are at. Um, and I typically go for the lower health one just to see a lot of kill for myself. And it also makes it to where there can't be a comeback scenario. Um, in this particular scenario, the Justina actually gets booted. Uh, by the by the roller there, which is unfortunate for her. So I end up going after her for this reason uh, They do a good job at armor swapping though So I'm not able to finish it out And they actually end up getting the kill on the TN high, which is very well done by them uh, but Anyway, they're away with their ultimate But I noticed that since TN high is dead There's gonna be a soul blue essence and you always want to steal that away from players whenever you can it gives you a free heal And it prevents them from having any comeback So very important Proud of me. 
lovely, as if freshly hammered and wrought. We were always going to win. Alright guys, in this last scenario, the Zipping Ying is the most important threat here because I know that since there were three people alive since the last time that I checked that Tianhai and they died, uh, Justina had already burned her ultimate, so Zipping was going to be the most difficult opponent uh, here at the end. So, whenever I'm going in this engagement, I definitely want to make sure I'm mindful of the third party scenario. If I start getting low enough, definitely want to make sure to get out of there. I'm looking for any combos that I can get. They do get ahead of me at the beginning here. And they actually take the bait. I wasn't going to go for the heal there. But we end up going for it there. Just as a little bit of cushion. I predicted right based on the color, but it's an unarmed kick. So you can't actually parry those. And then from here, I'm probably going to end up making a video about this. But this is why parry is so bad to use. Um, if you aren't 100% sure what's coming out. So in this scenario... We have me going for the focus attack. I already know in my head that I want to go for this, um, I believe it's called Dragon's Flurry. So I'm going to charge up. There's the first ding here. And at this point, I don't really care what the zipping is going, going to go for. Um, they could hit me out of focus, but it's not going to do enough damage to where I'm going to really worry about it yet since I still have my ultimate. Now, the first ding is usually a pretty good... Is usually a pretty good way to bait out that parry. So if they miss that first parry, you you are then free to hold a little bit longer and get whatever free damage off you want. So this is applicable to the long sword, katana, great sword, even uh, nunchucks. It's 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 a thing across a lot of different weapons. I would say probably the only one it's not really applicable to is the spear, just because of how delayed the focus stacks are that they can actually get a second parry off. Uh, but that is something you want to look out for is if you can bait out a parry and then punish with a focus attack after that, then even though they guessed right, they didn't time it well. So that's a little bait you can do. And from here, that's pretty much the rest of the fight. There's no way for them to really come back unless they get a reset off. And whenever players are low, they typically try to lash out with a focus attack. It is just natural for them to do so, myself included. So... If they're charging a focus attack and they're ridiculously low on health, then chances are they're going to go for the focus attack and you can just throw out a parry, especially if you're not in danger of getting killed off of one combo. My old masters be proud of me. And from here, this is why whenever you use the nunchucks, you want to try to face away from your opponent. The aim assist will drag you back for the hit if you're too close to them, but if we go back to that next fight... Where are we at? If we go back to this next fight, you can see that I'm charging up whenever the grapple's coming in because these gold hits are going to come out anyway. That's just free damage. Throw down the F3 to cover the landing. If they hit, then I can combo this in. Quick little aerial follow-up. That's that fight. So going back to this aerial combo scenario. You can see that the F3 is not only useful for a reset scenario, but you can see they keep going after after me with their attacks. It's going to cling off the F3. And whenever it's clanged, that's free damage for me. Now, this combo is not true, obviously. Um, I'm just going for the 1-2 vertical, and then I want my aerial to then kind of do a little homing attack on them. Just in case they don't go for a focus attack or an iframe through it, then this is a pretty sweet follow-up. Check it out. See, see that follow? It literally bent my trajectory from there to there. Pretty nuts. So anyway, we follow off of that, get the hit off, and then the, the smack down, the knockdown to then put them back on the floor. This allows us a little bit of advantage to then do a follow-up. And Nunchuck is like one of the best weapons ever for follow-up. And that's pretty much the game, guys. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. If you like the content, please be sure to subscribe and like, do all that sort of stuff. Yodo Hime is still very strong in solos, uh, so definitely pick her if you're looking to get some wins. Um, I went, again, full stamina glyphs for this one, so uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed yet again. Don't forget to comment, share, and thank you all to the channel members, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. I know that it's getting harder Not like I would do
comes another My tears revealing powers Just one drop to recover Can't stop me cause I'm the phoenix oh, oh.